Discussions in this show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research Incorporated, a broker-dealer member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Clear Vista Financial are not affiliated. You are listening to the Spend Life Well Show with Kingdom Advisor Mark Trice and Jesse Hamilton. Mark and Jesse are passionate about seeing you spend life well. If you want to save for and invest in the future, then this show is for you. Call now and join the conversation with your financial questions. 512-452-1120. 512-452-1120. Mark and Jesse will answer your questions and discuss practical financial principles based on a foundation of biblical wisdom. So if you're ready to quit worrying about your finances and begin to spend life well, then call 512-452-1120. And let's meet your host, Mark Trice and Jesse Hamilton. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, Psalm thirty-seven twenty-five says, "Once I was young, now I'm old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread." Folks, you're listening to the Spend Life Well Show, where we apply biblical wisdom to your financial life. I'm Certified Kingdom Advisor Mark Trice, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to take a few moments to listen to us today and and uh, share with us your situation with your finances or your financial questions. This is a live call-in program. So you can call us anytime here in the studio at 452-1120. That's area code 512-452-1120. Uh, Jesse is out today. Jesse volunteers his time during the summer to play at uh, various youth camps around the country. And I think he's somewhere deep in the Piney Woods today uh, playing a few sets for a camp out there. So we wish Jesse well. Jesse will be back with us uh, on the next program. But we're glad that you've chosen to listen to us today. Give us a call, 452-1120, 452-1120. Our producer will take your call and put you on the air in just a moment. Uh, Let's jump into the news here today. Oh, man, there's been a lot of information. Today was another uh, crazy week on the markets, another uh, uh, releasing of a lot of different financial information. Uh, So let's jump right in. And some of the things that really is out there is, Folks are kind of calling us up wondering just how bad is it out there? You know, we, we, the markets passed that, I don't know if it's a, a, an arbitrary mark, but at some point uh, in the last week and a half, the S&P 500 crossed over minus 20% for since the peak. And that seems to be, at least to the media, uh, the magic number that signifies that we are in a bear market. And of course, I start getting calls when people start um, listening to the news saying that we're a bear market. Now, I don't know what my clients are were thinking in between, you know, when it's minus one to minus 19, why is minus 20% in the market have a special say? But as, as usual, our clients call us and we reassure them what's going on with their portfolios and stuff. But, uh, you know, a lot of things have been going on that really have been causing us um, some concern. You know, a week and a half ago, the Federal Reserve raised uh, oh, overnight cool. Fed funds rates to up, up a three quarter point percent increase. Now, over the last 40 years, only 8% of all these hikes, and there's been 65 rate hikes by the Federal Reserve, only, only about 8% of them were greater than half a percent. And this past week and a half ago, that was one of those. The Federal Reserve is aggressively raising rates. So, so you know this, in order to, and, and I choose my words here carefully, um, you know, we can say cool down, but really to destroy demand so that inflation will come down. We know inflation is close to 9% year over year. We saw that with uh, some data this week that was released on the uh, average house price increasing over uh, 14% year over year. That's pretty hot. And it, inflation is going to be impacting a number of different things. We, we see that already. If you just go to the grocery store, go to the gas pump, uh, you know, there's a lot of things here that you need to be aware of. And so every asset class is impacted by inflation, but only one can call inflation kryptonite. You know, it's kryptonite. Remember from Superman? Uh, Superman had kryptonite that he was not uh, allowed to be around, otherwise he'd be destroyed. And so uh, kryptonite is... The, for this ask the class, you know, dangerous, and that's bonds. Bonds 
cannot stand inflation. Rising prices erode the value of your fixed coupons or your interest, and therefore the prices of those existing bonds have come down in order to get old rates in, to line up with the new higher ones. The return through this week for bonds is off the chart compared to every other year for the total U.S. bond index. I mean, it's negative. We look at a 20-year treasury down over 25%, 24%, I think, year to date. Um, on, on those, we saw the 10-year treasury this week pull back a little bit. I want to say that that was down to 3.1% uh, when we haven't seen levels that high since 2011. So financial conditions are deteriorating quite rapidly, which should slow down inflation. The problem with this type of monetary policy is we really don't know where the line is. How do we cool off demand in the economy without sending the economy into a deep recession? And this is where the Federal Reserve is trying to thread a really thin needle here. And the market sometimes is not very optimistic that it will be able to achieve this as the as um, Jerome Powell testified this week, he's the Federal Reserve Chairman, that it may not be such a soft landing this year. And so <clears throat> I don't know how you can call really the largest destruction of wealth in modern market history a soft landing. We have seen a drawdown of trillions of dollars of value in the stock market and the bond market since the beginning of the year. Trillions. That's a pretty big shake uh, to this to the system here. No, so naturally, people some people are scared. Um, you know, we we look at some things. Sometimes we look at put to call options on the on the stock market to see that is they're they're approaching those pandemic highs we saw in March of 2020. And so things may seem pretty dark out there. But the question everybody wants to know is how much worse is it going to get? Right now, I think the S&P ended up about just a little over 18% off its highs uh, early in January. And, and really, to be honest, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. It is a bear market still. But is it going to fall to minus 30%, minus 40%? Can it, can it get cut in half? Well, sure. All these things can actually happen. But what if the worst doesn't come to pass? What if inflation actually does begin to moderate. What if the economy bends but doesn't break? Then how much of a risk has already been priced into the market? I'll argue quite a bit. And this is where I start to get excited because when we see these things uh, happening in the markets, these potentially are opportunities for us to preserve capital or protect capital and maybe reinvest when things improve at lower prices. So. You know, if we look at the S&P 500 index, it's probably not a great measure of how bad things are because mega cap companies have hidden a lot of that carnage. And so let's take a look at what the average stock is doing. Now, for our conversation today, I want you to listen to me about this. I, I use the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones uh, for calculating drawdown individually of those 500 components that would have taken forever. The Dow is only 30 stocks, right? So it makes it a little bit easier to look at, and there's been turnover in the index, but I think this is a decent representation of the overall market. All right, right now, the average stock in the S&P 500 and the Dow are, are both down about 29% from their highs. That's the average. The average stock in the S&P and the Dow are not being beaten up as badly as they were during the COVID crash, but the same can't be said for the NASDAQ, where the average stock is getting hammered down about 40% from its highs. And so, you know, we can't really sugarcoat these things or pretend that I know this is this is a huge overreaction or anything like that. Things are bad. Then the stock market's reflecting that reality. When you're reading opinions, mine's one of them, right? If you're reading those opinions or you're listening to the talking heads on television, remind yourself that nobody, and I mean nobody, knows how bad it's going to get or how it's going to last, how long it's going to last. And the same thing applies for people that are on the, on the television telling you that the bottom is in. Folks, I want you to realize this, that nobody knows. Nobody knows. You know, I, I don't listen too much to the talking heads on television because 
they're paying to get on there. They're they're looking for the opportunity to say, look how smart we are. Put your money with us. And I want you to be careful because there's a lot of people right now, and I won't call them charlatans, but sometimes I think that they're trying to earn a living as well. And there's a lot of people around here that really are uh, not experts. They're experts in what they do, but they don't. They can't. They don't have a crystal ball. They can't predict the future. And if you're not in a position to take advantage of a sell-off like this, then you have to at least be able to survive. This is why you need to make sure that you're talking to your financial advisor about what they are doing with your portfolio to protect it. And I know some people will use annuities and things like that. We don't really discuss annuities on the show unless a caller comes in. Uh, but those may be something that might be something that you consider. But uh, it, this is a situation that you need to make sure you're having those conversations with your financial advisor to make sure that your portfolio is either protected or prepared to take advantage of this sell-off in the market. I was talking to a client um, uh, the other day and they were calling up. They were just a little worried. And a lot of my clients that are worried have not looked at their statements and they're, they're afraid to. And a lot of new clients, we have to train them is that, okay, you need to be aware of what's going on in your portfolio. And they asked me, do I, do I know when it's all going to end? And I'm, I'm like, no, I don't. I don't have a crystal ball. And no one on television, no one in the media knows when it's going to uh, take event or end here anytime soon. Uh, I was looking at something the other day and, and uh, it was um, an article. Uh, he was on Bloomberg and it was a J.P. Morgan Chase uh, economist. And he was saying that the bottom is in the, of the market because the amount of cash that has built up the M2 money supply, the amount of cash in the system is at a high since we haven't seen in, in a decade. And what he really didn't admit to was that this is a different situation than it was a decade or so ago during the financial crisis. We haven't seen these conditions in a very long time. In fact, a lot of my clients uh, that I work with and so forth that are in retirement now, we're just barely young adults when the last time this happened. I was in grade school, not trying to date myself or make me seem like a young whippersnapper, but I was in grade school when all this happened. This is the early 80s. This is the early 1980s. We had high inflation. We had a situation where interest rates were rising quickly and a recession was created to cut demand. And we had a good recession there, not a good one, but a, a strong recession there in the mid eight, early 80s. And so, folks, this may happen again, but we've seen this before. We've seen this. And so no matter how bad it's going to get, we know that things will get better. They always do. And that's one of the reasons that I kind of looked at our, our, uh, our verse for the day from Psalms. Uh, once I was young, Psalm 37, 25, once I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for breath. Folks, God will provide. God will get you through this situation and, and any scenario that you have because you have a relationship with him. We can count on that assurance that, that God's always going to provide. And so when I have tough times, when you have tough times, let's just remember what scripture says that um, you know he will be there with us, he will provide for us, and we have to put our assurances in that. But from a practical standpoint with your portfolio, you need to make sure that you are looking at what you own, looking at how it's performing. When we come back into the next segment here, we'll talk about the actual performances of the S&P 500, all that stuff for the, for the week and how it, how it stands year to date. But I want to encourage you to take a few moments this weekend, open up your statements from the last quarter or log in online, look and see what's going on with your portfolio. And if you're concerned, I want you to call your financial advisor this next week. And if you don't have one, give us a call. Uh, you can reach us at spendlifewell.com. That's our website. There's lots of resources on there for our show. You can watch uh, recordings of, of previous shows. You can uh, download a white paper or two of, of things that might help you in your quest for preparing for your financial goals. 
And you can send us a message. You can send us a message at radio at spendlifewell.com. That's radio at spendlifewell.com. Or uh, you can um, uh, just give us a call at 800-491-4508, 800-491-4508. When we get back um, here in a few minutes uh, from the break, we'll continue our conversation of what's been happening in the markets. It actually was a pretty decent week. It was the, one of the first uh, good positive weeks that we've seen in, in several weeks. And so that's a positive there. Is this a bear market rally? We'll have to see. And we will um, talk about that in the next break. But give us a call here in the studio, 452-1120, 452-1120. You'll get on the air and ask your question, and we will answer that question, whatever it may be. Uh, if you're concerned about something in your portfolio, you just have a question about the economy, or you want to know something about this particular thing or another, we'd be happy to try to tackle that and solve it together. And at least you get your answer uh, for, on that particular question. You know, folks... Um, Get your calls in early because oftentimes people call in. We run out of time. Give us a call in the studio, 452-1120. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Spend Life Well Show. I'm Certified Kingdom Advisor Mark Trice. Jesse has taken the uh, weekend off. We wish him well as he plays for a number of different youth camps around uh, Texas. East Texas, I think, is where he is today. Uh, so we wish him well. Uh, we have been talking about you know, trying to have a positive spin or a positive attitude on all the kind of seemingly worrisome economic information that's out there. And uh, I know sometimes people will listen to the show and and uh, I talk to them during the week and it's like, man, Mark, it's so depressing. And we don't want it to be that. We want, you know, we, that's our, kind of our mantra here at Clear Vista Financial with a spend life well. We want you to take advantage of all the blessings that God has bestowed upon you and enjoy life. Um, uh, we believe that there is a lot of biblical wisdom that can give us guidance towards our finances and uh, building wealth. And in fact, there, there's over 2,000 verses in the Bible dealing with wealth and possessions. And I think that was, all that information is there because God wanted us to have a guide. He wanted us to have direction at, uh, about how to handle our finances. And also, too, he knew that we would struggle with it. And so I'm thankful that um, God put so many um, scriptures and nuggets of wisdom in the Bible so that he can guide my family and your family on how to handle our finances. If you're not familiar with what scriptures are out there, I encourage you to uh, uh, visit us on our website at uh, spendlifewell.com. You'll find some resources there that can kind of guide you to different things. And of course, give us a call. We love talking to people. Give us a call here in the studio, 452-1120, 452-1120. I did want to make a, a kind of a program change announcement because I was listening during the break to one of our commercials. We normally have a monthly market update the first Saturday of the month right after our show at 915. You can register for those at spendlifewell.com forward slash radio and it'll take you to the link to register but we're this month because it is going to be the july 4th weekend we're figure you're out having fun having barbecues and and picnics and stuff or at the pool uh so we're going to postpone that normal first of saturday of the month to the second saturday of the month so we'll be hosting that on saturday july 9th right after the program at 9 15. so i wanted to remind you that if it still says that on the website i know we were trying to change that this week please know that that will be Saturday, July 9th at 9.15 a.m. So how how did the markets go this week? How were things going? It actually was a fairly positive week. Um, uh, the S&P 500 actually went up over 6% uh, for the week. That's a big move, right? And I think a lot of it, a lot of the pundits and the talking heads, we were, we were talking about this in the last segment. We don't, shouldn't listen to them, but they're they're just basically saying that the, the market's at a bottom, everything's over, everybody jump back in. And you see a lot of that going on, especially with the quote experts. And for those of you that are watching on social media, 
Um, uh, I put little air quotes on the on the screen just then. So for the experts saying that the bottom is in, uh, but there's a lot of technical experts like myself that believe that maybe we got a little more downside to go. Uh, like I said, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen. But it certainly was what we call a bear market rally this week. The NASDAQ was up um, over almost 9% this week. Uh, and we saw bond uh, yields fall a little bit, which is good for bonds. I think we went from uh, down, we ended the, the week down at 3.125 on the 10 year treasury. Uh, that was down from a high of um, 3.48, uh, which was just last week. And so that's good news because it impacts the uh, mortgage rates and so forth. The 10-year treasury does. The long-term treasuries, the 20-plus year treasuries were down. Um, well, they were actually up slightly for the week, just about a, a three quarters of a point, but down quite a bit over almost 24% year to date. So looking at small caps, um, they were up for the week as well, but still down over 20%, 21% for the year. And the S&P 500 is still down over 18% from its high in early January. So still, we're still in the bear market. We still have a lot of losses out there that you have to look at. I encourage you to talk to your financial advisor. If you don't have one, give us a call or visit us at spendlifewell.com. Uh, you can click on there to schedule a complimentary consultation. It doesn't cost you anything just to talk. And like I said earlier, we love to talk to folks. So, uh, in fact, give us a call here in the studio, 452-1120. Uh, I know people would rather listen to you out there than to listen to me sometimes. So give us a call, 452-1120. So, you know, the markets um, kind of rebounded a little bit this week. We're still, from a technical standpoint, we're still within ranges that cause me a little concern because we've seen these little rallies this year about three times. And... Uh, the market hits a bottom, it rallies a little bit, maybe even 10%, and then it rolls over again. And so we're still in this little bit of a sideways motion with the S&P 500. We'll have to watch that closely this coming week to see if that continues on up or if it begins to roll over again. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're, our role as advisors is to watch these things for you. If you don't have one, you know, give us a call here in the studio, 452-1120, or give us a call during the week. You can find our number or it's just schedule a consultation at spendlifewell.com and click on the button that says schedule a consultation. Well, all right, enough about the markets. I can talk all day about that because that's something that's a passion of mine. Uh, but I want to talk about this whole notion of retirement and how do you prepare for retirement? And, you know, it's interesting to note that there's not a lot of scripture that talks about retirement. In fact, there's only really one verse, and I think it's in Genesis, uh, that talks about uh, mandatory retirement for the priest, the Levite priest. And so this is really interesting. So what is retirement? And I'd love to hear from listeners, what, what is your retirement? What's your, what's your goal? What's your ideal retirement? And I think what we're seeing a lot, especially with our baby boomer clients, uh, with, with that generation, we're seeing that retirement is not about hanging up um, and not having to deal with a time clock or punching your time card every day and sitting on the front porch in your bathrobe and rocking chair and counting the cars going by. It's not about that at all. Retirement is the second half of life. There's a great book out there by Bob Buford that I encourage you to pick up. It may even be linked on our website there at spendlifewell.com. But there's a book there by Bob Buford, and he talks about the necessity of having a plan during your second half of life, whether that's you know 50 and beyond or 40 and beyond. It, it varies for everybody. But what's your plan? What are you planning to do? And how is God going to use you in this next chapter in life? And what we're seeing is a lot of people are doing things they never thought they'd be able to do because they had to work. And... I'll give you some examples in a moment, but I tell you, without exception, and I'm, I know I'm making a bold statement here, but I'm telling you, without exception, when we talk to our retiree clients, you know, about six months after they retire, um, we ask them, you know, how's it going? What's going on? We do a check-in and so forth. And without exception, every one of them says, we are so busy that we don't know how we ever had time to work. 
And that's a cool thing because they're finding what it is that they want to do in life. And so maybe that's, you know, watching and playing with the grandkids. Maybe that's starting a, a part-time job, doing something that you've always wanted to do. We had a client one time that it was her goal when she retired, and she retired at 70 from her normal job. Uh, she wanted to go back to school to study to become an archaeologist. And guess what? I bet this weekend she's out on some dig somewhere uh, looking for fossils, and she's loving it. And so retirement is not a time that we just simply hang up our cleats, if we will, or hang up our boots and do nothing. Retirement is when you get a chance to explore the things that you've always wanted to do. Because what it leads me to believe, when there's not that much scripture in the Bible about retiring, maybe we're never really supposed to, quote, retire. Now, I know in America, that's this concept that once you reach 65, you're supposed to retire and enjoy your golden years, etc. But I don't know that that's entirely true. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I want to do, be able to do that someday. But or at least have the option to, but what are you going to do with your life? So we're going to get into here in the next couple of segments here, we're going to get into what are some of the things that you need to make sure that you're doing in order to help you make that transition from the normal workforce to the retirement workforce or the retirement activities and things. And so we have a checklist that we go through with all our clients. And if you call us for a complimentary consultation, we'll We'll walk through that with you as well. But let's jump into some of the most important things that are out there to help you prepare for retirement. Some people ask, when do I need to start? Well, you need to start now. I don't care what age you are. You've got to start planning for that. It may be very high level. Uh, when you're 22 or 25 or so, you're not really thinking about that because it's a long ways down the road, but it will get here faster than you, than you realize. You need to start preparing for that now. If you're within five years of retirement, well, you've got a lot of work to do. And so we want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Uh, I often tell people, even if you've been diligent about saving and preparing for the future, you need to start talking to a professional about retirement, you know, sometime about five years before you really want to do it. And that's just to get into the nitty gritty, because there's a lot of work that needs to be done to help you prepare for that. But let's talk about the number one thing that people overlook time and time again when it comes to preparing for retirement. And that is understanding what it is that you spend as a household every month. You heard me right. Just understanding what you're spending. You're like, wait, wait, Mark, I, I, I have a little bit of money left over at the end of the month, or I'm always trying to stretch it to make it to the next paycheck. But I, I can tell you that many times we'll sit down with uh, folks in our office, they're thinking about retirement. And I ask them, what do you spend every month? And one of two things happens. They'll say, I don't know. Or maybe perhaps they'll start looking up to the left or the right up above their head. And I don't know what they're looking at. Maybe it's written on the ceiling or something. But they're trying to access, you can tell them from a psychology standpoint, they're trying to access the creative part of their mind because they don't have any idea. Or the second thing that we see often is they'll start listing their bills. They'll start listing their bills. Now, and now if I put you on the spot right now, if you're listening today, I said, okay, where, where do you spend your money? Well, you could probably list about half of it, right? Because we don't remember all the different things. You list half, you may, hey, I got, got a mortgage, got some rent. Maybe I got a car payment. And you can go through your laundry list of stuff and I guarantee you, we're missing about 50% of all the things that you spend your money on. So the number one thing that you can do to help prepare for retirement is just simply track your spending. Track your spending. We tell folks just to simply write it down. Now, folks don't, you probably don't use as much cash as you used to. Um, a lot of us use our, our debit cards or credit cards, or, or maybe we even have a checkbook. I know a lot of young folks don't have to even have checkbooks anymore. but you need to write down, and I'd say use an old-fashioned yellow pad or whatever, or a notepad, and simply write down where you're spending money. And I want you to do that for a month. If you do that for a month or so, now you might be able to download your bank statement if you're just using a debit card. And you can see where you're spending money. But I want you to put that into categories, you know, like food, eating out, 
uh, discretionary spending for things that you like to do with entertainment. Uh, of course, the, the more simplistic things like the, the mortgage, the car payment, and don't forget to add in your giving into that as well. So track your spending. That's going to tell you a lot. Now, a lot of times we will we will have folks call in and they'll ask us, well, what, 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 you know, hey, what should I be spending on this in my budget? And I was like, I, I don't care. It's your money. And I know a lot of people want those guides like that. We can kind of give you rules of thumb that say, hey, you don't want to spend more than this on your on your mortgage or whatever like that. But they're rules of thumb. You know, God's entrusted you, not not me, to spend the money that he's entrusted you with. So it's up to you to figure out where you spend your money. I tell people sometimes that I don't I don't care if you go to the local coffee shop five times a day. If that's where you want to spend your money, spend your money there. Uh, but you need to know where it's being spent. We have a, a, a funny anecdote that I share sometimes. Uh, the fellow was in trouble with the IRS and stuff. And so he had to really know where every dollar was going because he had to pay back these liens. And uh, he tracked his spending for a month, came back and talked to us and said, um, you know, here's here's my budget. I said, Did anything surprise you? And I'll call him Joe. Joe says, yeah, I spend three hundred and fifty dollars a month on Dr. Pepper. And we're like, whoa, that's that's a lot. Of course, we don't respond that way. We just go, huh? We say, hmm, I guess. So he's, he basically told the story about how he was uh, in the morning. He'd go get two 20 ounce Dr. Peppers, which I think they're about two thirty nine now. And then in at noon, he would go out for lunch and he would get another couple of Dr. Peppers. And then on the way home, he would grab another 20 ounce Dr. Pepper. So he was easily spending 10, 11, 12 dollars a day on Dr. Pepper. And, you know, we said that's a lot. But he said we asked him, all right, how are you going to do anything about that? He goes, no, I love Dr. Pepper. I'm still going to drink the same amount of Dr. Pepper. Uh, I'm just not going to buy it at the convenience store. I'm just going to change the way that I spend it. So tracking your spending can really help you a lot uh, with just figuring out what's the baseline of what I need to live on in retirement. It's that simple. And it's not doesn't require a sophisticated program or anything. It just requires you taking a few minutes to figure out where every dollar is going. There's a lot of great apps out there. Uh, we sometimes see people using the MoneyWise app, which is a program on the show. MoneyWise plays every every weekday afternoon at three o'clock. Um, our friend Rob, Rob West is the host of that, and we listen to it as well. But uh, there's a MoneyWise app you can don- download at MoneyWise.org. Uh, you can also um, there's the uh, apps that maybe are offered through Dave Ramsey's site. So I encourage you if you want to use an app, that's fine, but this doesn't require an app. This is just basically looking at where you spend your money and writing it down. I think one of the things that people miss a lot is just simply uh, the cash that they spend. I don't know about you, but you know, I might have twenty dollars in my wallet on Monday, and by Friday I've got two, and I can't tell you where it all went. Right now, I might suspect where it might went, but I don't know where it went exactly. So when we get back in a moment, we're going to delve further into this retirement checklist and talk about the other things that you need to think about as you prepare for retire. Um, you can give us a call here in the studio, 452-1120. Folks, you're listening to the Spend Life Well Show. I'm your host, Mark Trice. We'll be right back. Join us on Facebook to see the fun that goes on at the Bridge Austin. There's behind-the-scenes pictures, live videos, and news. We have a wealth of faith to share with you. Just look for The Bridge Austin on Facebook and hit like. Discussions in this show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research Incorporated, a broker-dealer member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Clear Vista Financial are not affiliated. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mark Trice, your host. You're listening to the Spin Life Well Show. We've been talking about what the Bible has to say about retirement or, uh, recently, and there's not a lot of direction about our wisdom about retirement. But there is a lot of direction and wisdom in the Bible dealing with your finances and wealth. And so retirement is, I, in my view, retirement's just the beginning of the next phase of life. 
it doesn't mean that you're necessarily not going to work or be busy. It just means that you're going to do something different and you need to have that plan. And so we've been talking about what things do people need to do to prepare for retirement. We said the most important thing, and it seems really simplistic, but the most important thing that people can do to help prepare for retirement is just simply track your spending or write it down, as we used to say, uh, when we were still using pencils and not using our, our smartphones for everything. So uh, track your spending. The second most important thing that you need to do is you need to figure out what your post-retirement income needs will be because your life may change. You may travel more. You may decide to not go anywhere. There's some rough rules of thumb that you can think of or look to for guidance. I know Aon Consulting, was a, which is a large insurance-related uh, uh, firm, basically was saying that you need somewhere between 75 and 80% of your pre-retirement income. You need that much income in retirement. That's a rule of thumb. What we find is, is that people may dramatically change their li- their standard of living. You may, uh, you may still have a mortgage. Someone else may not. So you need to really understand that what's going to change in retirement when it comes to your spending. There may be no change at all, and you need 100% of what you have before retirement uh, during retirement as well. So it's important that you determine what that is. And of course, the easiest thing to do to figure out what that might be, or at least give you some guidelines, is to track that spending. See, everything's coming back to that that tracking the spending. The third thing that we need to be working on in preparation for retirement, we encourage everyone to get out of debt and stay out of debt in retirement. Now, I see a lot of clients that will decide that they're going to change their lifestyle and they're going to um, uh, use some of the retirement money to buy a new house. Well, like I said, it's your money. I don't care. I don't think that's the wisest thing to do unless you're paying cash for that house. Don't take out another mortgage, a 30-year mortgage when you're 70. Um, that's going to put a lot of burden on you uh, when it comes to paying off that debt. So get out of debt and stay out of debt. Now, also, too, one of the things that you need to think about as you prepare for retirement is making sure that you max out any workplace retirement plan contributions that you can so that you're building up assets a little faster. You know, when we get close to retirement, you know, hopefully we've got the kids out of the house. We're not paying for college or anything. So our cash flow, our free cash flow increases. Consider looking at your workplace retirement plans, or if you need an outside IRA or Roth IRA, consider those things and really max those out. Uh, you know, we can put over $25,000 in 401ks this year. Uh, an IRA, if you're over 50, or a Roth, you can put over $7,000 into those retirement vehicles. Make sure that you are making and maxing out those retirement cam- plan contributions because you won't get to do it once you've retired and no longer working. And more importantly, folks, you need to take control of your investments. I cannot tell you the number of times that I have met someone that said, oh, my employer is taking care of that for me. Folks, employers have not been responsible for managing and taking care of your retirement investments since the mid-70s. Okay, this is when the ERISA law changed. It shifted responsibility from the company to the employer. You're responsible for managing your investments. So please, please, please do not think that your employer is managing them for you. I know a lot of people will come in and they'll say, well, I've got it in this target date fund thing and they're managing it for me. Be careful about that. Well, we've got a caller, Stan. I uh, didn't want to be on the air, but he had a question. Is there a way to protect my income from being overtaxed by the government? He said that the, uh, Stan says he's in upper tax bracket, wanted to protect his income from overtaxation. Well, this is a great question. We're going to get to that in just a second, Stan. So stay on, the, stay on the line or on the air and listen uh, for that because understanding taxes in retirement is so important. A lot of people have referred to retirement uh, and the taxes in retirement as the ticking time bomb because there's this magic age that when you reach it, Uncle Sam is going to tell you to... Uh, basically force you to take withdrawals from your retirement accounts, whether you need to or not. 
And this can create unintended consequences for taxes and also whether or not your Social Security income is taxed, whether or not you get bumped up into a higher Medicare premium bracket. A lot of people get surprised by that. You got to make sure you're managing those taxes in retirement and before retirement. One of the best things that you can do, Stan, um, to minimize those future taxes is to make those contributions to your Roth IRAs or Roth 401ks. Uh, some people, especially right now, some people are considering also conversions of to their traditional IRAs over to Roth IRAs because the market's down, their account values are a little bit lower, and they're thinking this is a good time to do it. You want to be careful about that because when you do convert some or all of those traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs, you will be taxed on that um, on that situation. Uh, some people will will set up because their income is higher. Maybe consider uh, a, what we call a backdoor Roth IRA. There's there's a very specific way to do. Stan, I will not get on get into the details on the air about that. But if you have a question, uh, just schedule a, a quick phone call on our website at spendlifewell.com. I think we can help walk you through that. Uh, but when you get up there, you can't contribute to the Ross anymore. There's a lot of different things you have to consider. Those are very specific to higher income earners. And uh, you want to be talking to a financial advisor about things that you can do with that. Uh, but minimizing that future tax liability stand is so important. A couple of things I just mentioned there. You can also use different types of, of uh, vehicles that can help minimize or postpone uh, taxes for a little bit longer uh, using certain types of um, tax qualified type vehicles that are not retirement plans. We'd be happy to talk to you about those things, but they get a little bit more intricate in detail. And I don't necessarily want to try to dive into that on the air today. Uh, we'd have a lot of people, you and I would be able to have a conversation, but we might have a lot of people that might fall asleep because it is a little bit technical with that. But I'm glad you asked the question, Stan, because understanding taxes and retirement is one of the most overlooked things that people don't realize. You're still going to owe taxes in retirement. Even if you're only receiving Social Security as, as a couple, if that Social Security is more than a certain threshold, uh, say $34,000 of provisional income, then you're going to pay some income tax on your Social Security benefits. Now, the good news is, is that Relatively speaking, Social Security is a tax-free, or not tax-free. It's 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 not 100% tax. It is at least 15% of it is is tax-free. The remaining 85%, depending on your income levels in retirement, could be uh, subject to ordinary income tax. But the level of that depends on what other sources of income that you have coming in. Social Security calls it provisional income, and it really includes um, one half of your Social Security income. It can include any type of IRA withdrawals that you pay income tax on, any other uh, taxable interests that you earn through savings and other types of vehicles, uh, capital gains, et cetera. All these things uh, fall into this provisional income. So you have to be aware that we have tools in our office to help us forecast that. And a lot of times, especially with those Roth conversions, Dan, um, you have to be careful. We have a special program that we're able to Put in your tax return for last year, 2021. We can model some scenarios for 2022 and then tell you what's the threshold, what's the limit that you can maybe convert over to a Roth. But there are a lot of ways that you can minimize your future tax liability uh, as you prepare to go into retirement. But I think it's so important that people do that, people consider that because uh, that will be one of the things that could really ruin uh, retirement when you're having to pay so much in taxes and you force all sorts of bad consequences uh, for Medicare Part B premiums. Uh, we saw someone that did not plan. They came to us after the fact and uh, they had a lot of real estate that they've been selling as part of their portfolio. And they were taking a lot of uh, uh, taxable gains on that. And it pushed them up to the level where their monthly premiums for Medicare Part B, and this is per person, not per couple, it's per person, we're well over $450 a month. That's Medicare Part B. And that also applies to Medicare Part D, which is prescription drugs. So Stan, I encourage you to talk to your financial advisor. If you don't have one or just want a second opinion, you can give us a shout. Just go to our website, spendlifewell.com. 
click on the complimentary consultation. And when you do, um, you'll be able to schedule, just schedule a 30 minute phone call. We'll just talk for a little bit, see if we can walk you through that. And uh, there's nothing, those are complimentary. Uh, but when you do put those notes in there, give us a note, say, Hey, I called in the show about taxes and we'll remember who you are and answer your questions. Folks, if you, we got a few minutes left in the program. Uh, why don't you give us a call at 452-1120. Great question, Stan. Thanks for, for asking that. All right. So one other thing about retirement to consider when it comes to uh, other than taxes, you also need to think about your insurance needs. Now, most people think, well, I don't need life insurance anymore because I'm old. Well, that may or may not be the case. Talk to your financial advisor about that to make sure you don't need some type of insurance. Maybe you need long-term care insurance. Oh, oh, by the way, if I'm over 65, I need to think about whether or not I need to get Medicare uh, for health insurance. Uh, that's one of the mistakes a lot of retirees make. They don't understand Medicare and they underestimate the cost and they um, forget to sign up on time. So you want to make sure that you're looking at all the insurance aspects when it comes to retirement before you retire. Also, folks, we want to make sure, and this is surprising because about 74%, that's 74, 74% of all Texans will die without a will. That's ex insanely high, insanely high. 74% of all Texans will die without a will. We think that's so critical for you to have because there are so many complications that can arise uh, if you don't have a will and something happens to you. Uh, you know, we, we want our loved ones to be sad that we're gone, not mad that we're gone. Make sure that you have an updated will and several other legal documents as well. We're thinking about, you know, the, the advanced medical directives or the HIPAA release, uh, also a durable power of attorney. These are all things that a local attorney can help you with. If you don't know one, we will refer you to one in your area. We have lots of relationships with local attorneys that can really take care of you and help you ask the right questions. So the other thing in our final minutes that we have here is how do I generate the most income from my, the savings and investments that I've built up over the years? How do I get the most out of it? Because the timing of how you spend what bucket of money makes a big difference. It makes a big difference in taxes. It makes a big difference in how much you're going to have to stretch out through your retirement life. Uh, because we think that is really important for you to consider. And that in conjunction with determining how much of your monthly income is going to be made up of Social Security. There, if you're a married couple, there's over 22,000 different ways to draw your Social Security benefits. You heard me right, 22,000 different ways. A lot of people think it's just three or four, maybe 10 at the most. 22,000 different ways. That the decision of when and how you draw your Social Security can make the difference of literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of your lifetime. Hundreds of thousands. Don't make the wrong mistake of when and how to sign up. What a lot of people don't realize sometimes is if they've had um, a pretty done a pretty good job of saving for retirement with their investments and retirement plans, uh, that it may be beneficial for them to wait until age 70 to draw Social Security and, and draw from their savings during those interim years, the early years of retirement. And we can prove that to you if that's your situation. We can show that to you from a financial and mathematical standpoint. Just Don't just take our word. Make us prove it. And we can show you how that might impact you, that it would mean more for you, more for your uh, surviving spouse if you were to delay and maximize that Social Security. So, man, I know I know we have really thrown a lot of stuff with you. This is something we talk about often on the show. Uh, but uh, if you didn't get all this, give us a call or go to our website, spendlifewell.com, schedule that complimentary consultation. We'll just spend a few minutes. It doesn't, doesn't cost you a thing. But you want to make sure as you prepare for retirement that you need to understand all the implications of those choices that you're making. Because nothing is worse than getting five, 10 years into your retirement and realizing that you're broke, that you're going to have to make drastic changes to your lifestyle. Some people are really prepared for retirement. Some people want to live footloose and fancy free um, to spend whatever they want, not considering the implications. And then finally, you know, 
when you get all those things done, you need to talk about with your financial advisor about what you're going to do with your workplace retirement plans when you do retire. There's a number of different things you can do. You can roll them over. You can leave them where they are. But we can all walk through those things and your financial advisor can help you. But remember, visit us at spendlifewell.com and schedule a consultation. We have to talk to you. And the one final thing in our final moments here as we begin to wrap up the show is you need to set that date for retirement and stick to it because retirement's fun. It's the next chapter in life and we want you to spend it life well. Folks, you've been listening to the Spend Life Well Show. I'm your host, Mark Trice, Certified Kingdom Advisor. Uh, The Lord willing, we will join you next week, same time, same place here on the bridge. Uh, Have a great weekend. Oh,